Okay, guys, what's happening? SmartHelping.com here. So, I've recently done a, a lending at a service model a couple weeks ago. So, I didn't have, I haven't had time to build something else yet. Um, as you know, I've got a stockpile of probably 50 to 70 uh, financial models from SmartHelping.com. So, what I'm doing today, I want to try to get more content out about Google Sheets because more and more of my work is starting to go to Google Sheets instead of Excel. So I'm just showing you some of the different things you could do in a uh, Google Sheets that's helpful. One of those things is automated uh, performance tracking. And with uh, Google Sheets, you don't need much scripts. You don't need any scripts or any advanced um, codes to make a chart that will update as you move through time automatically. So. You know, as you move forward in time week to week, the chart will automatically um, add that period and aggregate the data accordingly instead of showing the entire range of dates all at once. So if you want to report on a full year, um, you can simply set up, and I'll show you how I've done it, set up a, a data summary that only populates the date if it is um, less than the end of the week like if you're doing a weekly uh, and and that is really nice for clean charting and visuals of any kind of data uh, performance tracking so the type of data I'm talking about here is financial information that is going to be related to basically any business that has revenues and expenses so the base, uh, the base structure of this template is that you've got some date, a uh, high-level description of what the data is. In this case, we're talking about a financial reporting. So we've got a couple income streams, we've got some expense items, and then we've got some cash in and out items that might not be related directly to the regular operations of the business. Um, and that's going to all map which I'm going to show you in a second and then we've also got the dollar amount so just these three data points are all we need to um, to make this work so let's go to our control tab so on the control tab this is just because obviously you might have this template in three years from now so you need to update the start uh, year of your tracking uh, so here I've just put the first day of the year for this year and then you can put since we are doing a weekly summary, you might have um, your weekend on a Sunday or a Saturday. So based on you putting that, it will update the end of the week and build the weeks um, accordingly. You can see here, if we end it on the first week, or we say the first week is going to be a Sunday, then you can see it's going to show 17 if you look at the current year here you could see if uh, Sunday is a, the seventh now that should change to the sixth if I put Saturday as my week weekend you see there it is and then updates accordingly and it's going and today's current date is March 21st so it's going to only populate data up to the end of the current week which is the 24th, which in this case is a Saturday. Now if I change this to Sunday, it'll go to the 25th. And there you have it. So that's kind of what the control tab is doing. And then this is also going to be used as a reference so that you can see here on the weekly, it stops at the current week, but there's still formulas in here to keep it going. Um, that's because let's say, let me just hard code in the date. Let's just say today is 2019. Well, now if you go to your weekly, you're going to see the date here populates all the way across until the end of that week in 2019. And the reason why that logic is important is because you can see on this dashboard 
the charts are only going to show data up to there and it'll look like this if you if you normally like if you were to do this in excel oftentimes you got to use some kind of fancy vba or something to make the chart automatically switch its range based on the data um, available even if you do blanks or it's really really uh, frustrating so here let's put this back you can see this is how it would look like let's put this back to today It's our today function. Now look at the dashboard. Nice and even. It only has data, you know, up to the current day based on what data is in the database, and it's nice and clean, really smooth. I've done this for um, a weekly, uh, monthly, and annual, all three uh, time frames, and everything is all automated. You don't have to do anything except for get the data structured to this sense where you've got a date description and dollar amount so now let's talk about how this data is actually populating so if you go over to the weekly this is the only other place you're going to input data besides the data tab which we need to color this the input color here we're going to be adjusting anything in this color everything else is formulas so weekly we have four different income streams so we've got a stream one two three and four now what you put in here should be only the unique income streams that you have on your data tab. So this obviously only goes up to four. So you, you, I just put stream one, two, three, four, but this could be like, you know, uh, ad revenue, service revenue, uh, product sales, subscription revenue, something like that. So you've got those different names. So each time that revenue item comes up, you would label it as whatever it is. And then you just have to make sure it populates by adding those four unique names here. For example, let's say we want stream one to change to product or let's say uh, subscription revenue. You'll see the top row now goes all blank and the monthly also auto the monthly and the annual both auto change off whatever you do in the weekly. So we got subscription revenue here. Go back to the data tab. Now, anything that's stream one should actually be subscription revenue. So if we change that, we actually just do a, uh, this is another nice, let's do find replace. So we went from stream, anything that's stream one, we want to say subscription revenue. Replaced everything that was that, and now if we go back to our weekly, you can see subscription revenues back in there, and it's there for the monthly and the annual, and it should update on our charts with the income types. You see, yes, it has subscription revenue right there. So that's kind of that's how the data is structured. That's how you can use this um, automation to report on a weekly, monthly, and annual basis. Um, on the weekly here, I put the actual days of the week it includes. So on the seventh, it's going to include every piece of um, sales or expense data from the first to the seventh, and the eighth to fourteenth, fifteen twenty one. Um, just so you know what period the date is representing because that can be confusing I know for clients uh, in this really point it very clearly to what what it is uh, so let's go I'll hit on the cash flow but let's look at the dashboard here um, so the first chart I've done three charts for each time frame the first one is just the primary financial line item so we've got you know your total income, your total expenses, and EBITDA. So this is kind of what your business operations are doing on a weekly basis. Now this chart actually combines each piece um, as a as a whole. So you've got like, uh, you know, for this week you've got, um, and let's do, let's put this into compare mode. We could see. So this is going to show you for this week for 120 any 128. You know you had 5,000 in income, you had 1,200 ex in expenses, and your net was 3,800. So it's going to show you in this bar what what amount of uh, cash made up what part. 
So don't make sure you know that the total here, like this is up to 10,000. That's not saying total revenue because in this we've got income and EBITDA and expenses. So it doesn't add up. Um, instead, it just shows you kind of proportionally how each piece re was relative to the other. So here you can see um, EBITDA was big, so that's good. Revenue was big, expenses were smaller. Um, and you can just see how that changes and flows uh, week to week. Now, this other chart is going to be an aggregate that makes um, logical sense to add everything together. So this is showing you, let's make this compare mode as well. So this is showing you all your four different income streams and what they totaled each week and what each was individually. So you can see week ending 128, you've got 250 for stream four, 972 for stream three, 1250 for stream two, and the subscription revenue at 2,555. So it shows you how much each one was relative to the other and what the total was for the week. So you, this is your basically total revenue um, from week to week. Which should be helpful and a very descriptive uh, visual uh, that can go. Now I've done, and I've also, as far as the, the overall timing, I've done the weekly up to two years and monthly to up to two years. So that way, if you have maybe the past year's data, you want to compare how you've done last year compared to this year, you can put that in there and it will populate everything from last year and then start moving as you move data into this year. Um, it'll show you, you know, a year over year comparison. Uh, then we've got cash flow. So you can kind of see each week here, this is like a bump of cash flow, and then the shade in the back is your running cash flow. So as your cash flows are positive, you see these go up and up. Um, let's put, let's just hard code a, a negative in here just for the fun of it. Let's just say we had an expense. Actually, we'll change on the data. Let's say we had an expense here. Uh, let's say we paid off a loan. So let's just put like 15,000. You're going to see now on the dashboard, we'll see a negative on let's see, where's our weekly? And we missed the row here, so let's fix that. So we need to sum up the whole row. Now, one thing about Google Sheets, I'll give you this tip, is if you slide things from right to left, so I'm going to go all the way down here and slide it, it's a lot faster, and that can help you when you're working with um, kind of long-range data sets. So you see there, that's going to go much faster. And now we got the update. That's what I want to see. So now you could see the cash flow for that period was negative. So now our running cash flow is negative. And as you have positive weeks, it starts to go back up. Um, and you'll see that on, on that. And the annual won't change because annual is just showing we've only got one year's worth of data. So it's just going to show what's happened in the current year. You see the monthly. Make sure. Oh, no. See the rest of these. We've got to update. Luckily, it's not as big. So let's update that real quick. Sum up the whole column. And we might as well double check that these are all duplicates. So if this one's right, they all should be accurate. That looks good, good, and good. Okay, so now we go back here. We should see the monthly. Yeah, there's the monthly. That makes sense now. We'll change this back to a smaller number. And I mean, you could also use this as if you wanted to, and let's put, these need to be aggregated as well. So the other thing is I'm aggregating the bottom uh, data points so that I get a data point in each week that is visible and it doesn't do a skip because it's trying to be too smart. I'm gonna use old chart editor. 
aggregate our date row. I've already done that for the monthly and annual. That's why they are working properly. Get this over. Okay. There we go. So uh, the dashboard doesn't have any date fluxes. Like you're not going to zoom in on a specific date range. But instead, it's going to do a running total that's automated. So as you add data and as you move through time, it's going to keep building up to two years uh, to your snapshot at once. So I feel like this is like the most broad based but useful tool that anybody with a business can use. It's just a matter of getting it into this three column format here uh, with the right uh, labels of each what each item is. And you could really I mean, if you have exports, your you know your business has some kind of an export detail that you just want to push in here to to show different things. We've also got a like this is going to show your percentage week over week change month over month or month to month and then uh, year over year once there's data in here. Say this was like six thousand, it'd be a negative fifty percent here, and this was not blank, so fifty eight. Let's undo that. Um, so, just fix the annual one. All right, ten three thirty nine. Ten three thirty nine. Ten three thirty nine. All matched up. Perfect. All right, so I think anybody could get some kind of use out of this. It, I mean, if you've got to change things around, it's not too hard. Um, you might have to paste in specific columns of your database into these specifically. Now, I, I'm available for consultant help, so if you need help doing this, you know, I do have a, my billing rate $75 an hour. If you want me to come in and just build something like this, but you know we have to tweak some things for different the different ways your data is populated, um, or you want some adjustments or anything else, we can do that no problem. So what I will do is, if you want to just get this template, I'll sell it for. I'm going to put it on uh, smarthelping.com for a $45 one-time fee. If you uh, pay that, it will the the um, the Google Doc will be emailed to you, and I'll have to change this because it's got the ID here. So obviously, you just copy this. So I'll have to delete this and then make a copy of a new one, um, or just hit, you know, copy. Now that's the one thing you're going to have to do when you do get this download is you just hit file, go to make a copy, and then you can have your own editable version. The version that you get for me is going to be a view only, but once you go and hit file, make copy, you'll get your own editable version of the same exact thing. And that's about all I got. Uh, if you want to see smarthelping.com, my other models, you go to smarthelping.com. You can see here I've got a whole list of them, a whole bunch. I'm going to add this one at the top with the Google Sheet templates. And um, I do have bulk discounts. Uh, basically, my models are categorized into mid, intermediate, or upper tier. Right now, if you, I've got discounts for mid and, and upper tier, like five mid levels, only 112. It's basically about half off. Uh, and as you scale up, 10 mid levels for 175, 20 for 350. Um, it's almost 75% off. Then all upper tiers for 200 bucks, and we've got six upper tiers right now, so that's a big discount as well. Uh, I guess that's about all I got today, and I'll see you on the next one.